much more glorious. So, uh, let's say verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But it, so now the veil's lifted. For us, we know who that is. We know what the shadow is. We know what the typology is. We get it. But unto, even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. Underline that in your Bible. Because who is the Holy Spirit? It is the Spirit of Christ. And there is no difference. So to those who would say that you get saved, but later on you get the gift of the Holy Spirit, this here says, if you don't get the Lord's Spirit, you're not saved to begin with. If you don't have it. And it comes at salvation time. When God writes your name in the book of life, you are now saved, you've been born again, and the Lord is that spirit, opening your eyes up to things you never knew. Uh, I'm going to preach sort of a different type of message this morning. It's, it's about socialism and communism versus what I call the law of liberty. And I'm going to include salvation in that because they are connected. But I remember years ago when I was pastoring out at Richwoods, there was a young family, a young couple. They had a daughter, and I, I don't know who invited them to church, but they started coming, they started liking it. And then all of a sudden, she came down, presented herself to the altar, and asked for salvation. She asked Jesus to come into her heart. And this was right around the time of the 92 election when Bill Clinton's running for president. And I already had a guy in my church say, you know, I think I'm going to vote for Bill Clinton. He's for the working man. He was saying that because his union told him that. Okay? That's why he was saying that. But this young lady gets saved. And I don't say a word to her about politics. And in about a month's time, she stood up and testified. And she said, you know, she said, before I got saved, she said, I, I was I voted for, you know, whoever, whatever Democrat there was. I was pro-abortion. I was pro this and pro that. And she said, now that I've got the Lord's spirit in me, I don't, I don't think that stuff's right anymore. I don't believe that way anymore. And I'm just going, amen. Yeah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I want you to think about the liberty that you have right now. Ask yourself the question, is there anybody in this country who is really in slavery? No. Now, let me say that there is human trafficking goes on in this country. That was part of the reason for the wall in Mexico was to stop the human trafficking, especially child trafficking. So to that extent, yes, there are probably people in this country who are literally in slavery. Okay, it's hidden, it's done illegally, but, it's, but it happens. But for the majority of Americans, they're not in bondage. They're not in slavery. They are free. They are free to commit whatever sin they want to sin. I watched an old episode of Dragnet, 1968, and they were talking about how bad marijuana was. And there was a guy who had just a common working man. At, uh, he worked at for some big tech company back, back in 1968. That was the character. And he was defending the use of marijuana. And he said, get ready because my generation is going to grow up and we're going to change the laws and we're going to make sure that marijuana is legal in this, in this state. 1968 to 2020. Here we are. Are we better? No. It's still just as dangerous as it was. And the Dragnet shows were based upon real cases. And in this particular case, the mom and dad both were getting high at this party at their house and their two-year-old daughter drowned in the bathtub. That was a real case that happened. 
okay, that they pulled it from. We have liberty in this country, but we are using liberty as a license to sin. And when people say they're in bondage, what it means is they want to relax the laws in this country to allow them to sin more. Amen? Anyway, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. One of these days, you and I are going to be transformed. And we're going to shine like the stars in the sky. So, turn to Matthew 17. Here is Jesus now. And he's gone up to a mountain just like Moses did. Let me get there. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. So we have four people going up to this mountain. And why is that important? Because it represents the gospel. Okay. What day was the sun, moon, and stars all created on? JR? Fourth day. It was done that way for a reason. And if you remember, going back Genesis chapter 1, God had created light in the universe before he ever created a source for that light. Day 1, he creates light. He says, let there be light. Four words. And there was light. Four more words. So light now has entered into the universe. So then, day 2, God divides the firmament. Day 3, God sows all the seed of the world and all the plants they grow and everything like that. Day 4. Four, uh, now, day four, you have the sun, moon, and stars come in. Now you have a source for that light, okay? So Jesus, uh, going up to the mountain John, with John, his brother, bringing them up into a high mountain apart, verse two, was transfigured before them, um, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was light, is, was white as the light. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine seeing that? It had Peter so elated. Let me, let me keep reading here. And behold, there, was, uh, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, or Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto them, Jesus, Lord, it, it is good for us to be here if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Jesus doesn't think this is a good idea. Because they'll end up worshiping who? Moses and Elijah. So, so while he spake, verse 5, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. Now, Peter was so elated by this. Turn to um, 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Um, I can tell you that a lot of the Hebrew roots is based upon Jewish fables. A lot of the stories, a lot of the doctrine, a lot of things they do. The Passover feast that most Jews partake of right now bears little resemblance to the Passover of the Bible. Very little. In fact, they have, a, they have a fable, a story that tells them when they have their Passover thing to set a plate there and an empty chair for Elijah. And they tell their young children, Go open the door and see if Elijah is there. And they run to the door and look to see if Elijah is there. They, they didn't get that from the Bible. They got that out of Jewish fables. Peter was a Jew and he knew them. And he said, We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Remember him and James and John were there on the mountain when Jesus' face shone like the sun and his raiment was white as a light. Because he says, verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And Peter says, And this voice which came from heaven, We heard, 
when we were with him in the holy mount. Now, I didn't hear it, but I believe it happened. Because he said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. He said, if you're not, if you don't have to believe me, believe the word that was written because that's the spirit of Jesus Christ is his word. Um, a sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed as into a light that shineth in a dark place. The light, remember, the, remember how Jesus' face turned into the sun? What shines brighter than that? The, the Bible, his word, the more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed as into a light that shineth in a dark place. That's how you got saved. The light shined into a very dark place. And God opened that up to you and you said, you know what? I'm going to get my life right with God. Amen. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, one of the things I'm going to share with you this morning is the idea socialism and communism. Does it ever follow a law? Does it ever have a legal representation behind it? in countries that have turned to communism. Hugo Chavez was the guy who brought socialism into Venezuela. What did he do? Did he follow the law? No, he ended up becoming a dictator. Adolf Hitler, um, Joseph Stalin, um, the guy in Cuba, Fidel, in Fidel Castro, okay? Did he follow any law in bringing communism to Cuba? No, he became the supreme dictator. You find the same thing in the Catholic Church. You have a supreme pontiff, a supreme dictator who tells you what you have to believe, even though it disagrees with the Bible. They tell you what you have to believe in order to be saved. It's darkness. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Now, I want you to think about what he's saying. He's the son. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the son. Notice the translators capitalize the letter S. The son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And I have a, um, I'm working on a new watchman. Because in Matthew 24, Jesus mentioned the false prophets. And I'm looking into a particular false prophet that is in Kenya. His name is Dr. David Owar. And he has had various news items printed up about him that he's not happy about. Because they tell the truth about him. This man claims on his website that he visited heaven... And God had in his right hand, John, God had in his right hand a bottle of olive oil. Not the book. You know who he gave it to? Dr. O'War. And Dr. O'War used that olive oil, he claims, to anoint the seat of Jesus Christ so he could sit on it and reign. Dr. O'War did that. That's his claim. He also claims to be the prophet that God told Israel about in Deuteronomy 18. I will send a prophet, capital P. Translators knew who that was. They knew it was Christ. Dr. Awar claims to be that prophet to the people of Kenya. And I've got a picture of him, of people bowing down to him and him receiving that. And not even the angel who shared with John some of the visions. When John bowed down to that angel, the angel said, get up. You're going to get us both in trouble. You don't bow down to me. That man's evil. Stay away from, I'm telling all the people in Kenya, stay away from Dr. O'War. Don't follow his doctrine. Don't listen to his preaching. The man's a false prophet. He would have you believe him over what's written in this book. And God wrote the book for all of us. Somebody say amen. John chapter 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light. One, two, three, four times. He uses the word light here, capital L. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So we have this image now, this repeated idea in the Bible that Jesus not only is the Son of God, but He is the Son, the light of the world. Okay, now, here's a picture of our solar system. Took me a long time to really think this through. The sun is what lights all of the, all of the planets. The sun does. When we, look, when we look through our telescope, see pictures of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. We see them because the light of the sun is shining on them, reflecting off them, and we can see them. Now, the picture that John had was that Jesus was standing in the midst of the seven candlesticks. He was in the middle of them, and the seven candlesticks were surrounding him. And I want you to notice Mercury, Venus. This is from the perspective of us on this earth. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Seven stars. Seven stars from our perspective here on this earth. Seven stars with the sun in the midst of all of them. God was giving us the layout of the solar system before they ever had a telescope to see what was up there. They could see the planets, some of them. Saturn's the only one, the last one that we can see. They didn't know about, and I don't call it, I call it Uranus, okay? And Neptune. They didn't know about those two. Couldn't see them. But they're there, like the seven stars and the seven candlesticks surrounding the throne of God. That's from the perspective of us on this earth. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. And here's the biblical application. For where two or three are gathered in my name. Where is Jesus? It's in the midst of them. Think about this. And I don't have a picture of this, but you had the tabernacle. And you had how many tribes? Twelve. How many months are there? It's twelve. Okay? And every month, when you look up in the night sky, there's a different set of stars there. Okay? That's, I do believe that this earth is the center of God's universe. It is the center point of everything that God does. It's intended for us on this earth... I do not believe Martians are living on other... I, I don't believe that. And they're spending millions of dollars every year searching for extraterrestrial life. Okay? Well, they're going to find some. Okay? When the angels fall. Amen? But Jesus promised where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So we have a few people here today. And Jesus must always be in the midst of his people. Amen? This Bible is the focus of everything that we do and believe here in this church. Somebody say amen. Isaiah 12, 6. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. By the way, where does he reign from? heart which God he didn't put it down here he didn't put it in my thigh put it right here in the midst of me and he dwells there surrounded by the 24 elders the 24 ribs Jeremiah 14 9 why shouldest thou be as a man astonished astonished is what that means as a mighty man that cannot save yet thou O Lord art in the midst of us and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. You ever felt like God left you? 
been there, okay? But he said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Amen? He is a mighty God, and we are called by his name. I bear the identity of Christian, born again, Bible Christian. I bear that name proudly. I'm not a Chrislamist. Okay? I got something to show you later about that. I'm not that. I am a born again, Bible believing Christian, and I love God's book. Amen? Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God, for showing us light. Thank you, dear God, for showing us great promises. Thank you, Father, for Jesus being in our midst today. I pray, dear God, that everyone that's watching, Jesus would dwell with them as well. He would give them comfort. Bless those who are in the hospital, Brother Sterling and, and others, Lord, who are recovering. I pray, dear God, that you would bless them. Show them, God, that you never left them. You never forsaken them. And though our fear brings that to our mind, God, you promise you would never do that. So, Father, help us when we get those ideas, when we get those thoughts that maybe you're not going to save us, maybe you're not going to fulfill your promise, God, that we would read those promises again and believe them once again. Bless your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Give me a few minutes to sit down for a minute and we'll have church. Yes. <laughs> okay. For sure. That's a good thing. Yes. 
It may not be in my truck. Okay. Now I'm going to clutch it. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. I went, uh, I don't. Yes, I had everything I done. I was backing out, and I couldn't get my gear into, into it. So then I figured it out, that, you know, I'm up low on the clutch, which means I've got a leak somewhere, because otherwise it would never have an okay. issue. But that's not a huge thing. Mm -hmm. What the big thing is now, I learned the way to sit. I guess yeah. the slave, whatever. Um, has an up angle, so if that bubble ever gets, you know, turned a certain yeah. way, it's going to put a bubble in my line. And right now, I didn't like push my clutch all the way in. It, it gets it now, it's better, because I have yeah. the fluid. Yeah. But, um... If it's leaking out, it's just going to suffocate. Yeah, yeah. 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 And plus, you think that's it's the reason just, why it might have rolled down in the woods? I'm assuming. Yeah. That, that's my guess. Okay. So what I'll probably just do is get the little slave cylinder or whatever, because I don't know how much they are, but I somehow get that put in. But I, I've got the other. We need to put the truck on the charger. Yeah. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do that as soon as I get yeah. that done. I didn't, I didn't get out there soon enough to yeah, die it again. Which yep. is a bummer. I mean, it, he shouldn't need a new battery. I think the battery's pretty new, but I guess if it sets for too it long, it'll go back. Well,
Uh, we didn't have it for several weeks. Well, I know that because yeah, I was dead in the world about just about. him sitting over there so the church won't tilt <laughs> like a boat listing we don't want that it will fall out yeah <laughs> hip number 404 is what we're going to start out with good to have you all with us today everybody visiting with us online we appreciate you guys we love you praying for you and um, I'm kind of just kind of let you know what I'm thinking um, that you know probably by November we may be back to a regular routine we'll just kind of see how it goes um, my recovery is slower than I thought it would be so it does it just it takes it out of you and I didn't didn't really understand that till I started trying to do stuff so anyway just going to take it slow and easy and be thankful that the Lord's gathering us here. Amen. And number 404, Jesus is all the world to me.
say amen to that? Amen. 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 God's good. Amen. God's very good. Amen. I uh, just letting everybody know that I uh, yesterday I wasn't feeling very good at all, and um, before I went to sleep last night, I, I felt like I had a fever and I was running a low-grade fever last night, and I may still be today. I don't feel very good today. So I took some ibuprofen. That seems to have helped a little bit. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stay distant. Okay? This is the... Huh? <laughs> hey, Jesus spit on things and healed people. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to keep my barrier here. Uh, with everybody just to do you a favor and um, like I say we'll we'll do the service this morning and then there won't be an afternoon service I, again I'm just sort of thinking maybe November uh, depending on how I'm feeling how everybody else is feeling uh, maybe we can get back to our full schedule so just kind of be praying about that all right um, we have several people that need prayer sister Rose uh, had surgery the other day. They blasted some kidney stones, wasn't it? Something like that. And um, so anyway, yesterday she was hurting it. She was in a lot of pain. And Rose, it's like I said during Sunday school, they could operate on Rose while she's sitting at her desk doing stuff. And um, she just has a high pain tolerance. Well, this was hurting her. And uh, so pray for her. Brother Sterling, I think you're watching. Turn around. We love you. We miss you. And uh, he's still in the hospital, been there, what, 20 days, something like that, 10, 15, I don't know. Um, I thought I was in the hospital four days, my wife said two. And I, you just lose, you have no idea what's going on in the world. I quarantined myself in the house, stayed in bed, and when I walk out, next time I walk outside, all the leaves had turned colors. And I'm going, I missed it! That's my favorite thing, my favorite time of the year, watching those leaves change. And anyway, so uh, just, just pray for our church, pray for people to start getting comfortable again. And I mentioned this last Sunday, and I, and I really mean this. We're not in California. Amen. Uh, everybody's leaving California because of the COVID. They're tired of the tyranny. And I'm going to preach on that this morning. Uh, liberty. God has given us liberty. And we have the liberty, we don't have a commandment to come into the house of God other than don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We come here because we believe in Jesus.